Let me tell you something. I'm reading that book. It is breaking my heart. Because it's like Baldwin wrote that in what, 73? Right. And it's still happening in 2019. It's almost as if the prophetic brilliance of James Baldwin in 73 could see where America was going. And so what he wrote in 73 about a criminal justice system that is criminal and unjust is still going on right now. And, and in the book, it basically breaks down how the criminal justice system, because of a police officer that decided to use his authority and power to punish Fani, and Fani ends up going to prison for something he didn't even do. He's engaged, he's in love with this beautiful woman, and y'all, it's an amazing love story in the midst of racism and hate and a criminal justice system that is unjust and finally goes to prison. I'm reading this book and when I'm reading the book, the longer I read it, the more depressed I get. I'm getting mm. depressed and depressed. We went to see it over the holidays. I asked Avni, what you think about the movie? Avni said it's depressing. <laughs> <I> said, exactly. <laughs> but I was because thinking. when you black in this country, if you really think Think about it. It can be depressing to know that the system is wired against you. It can be depressing to know a nightmare is always trying to hijack your dream simply because of the color of your skin. It can be depressing. But here's your shot. Because I see y'all wondering, where am I going with this? I'm reading the depressing book. But <laughs> you know what kept me reading the book is Fun. I knew who the author was. Uh, and because I know the author, even James in the Bowen. darkest, most depressing moments of the book, I kept thinking, I know Baldwin. And I know Baldwin's going to tie this together for me. I know Baldwin. I know Baldwin's going to give me some hope somewhere. Yeah. Because I know Baldwin, I know this book somehow, someway, is going to work out in the end. It don't feel good right now. But because because I trust the author, hey. I ain't gonna give up right now. And y'all, I might as well let y'all know, it's a dark time in this country. Our nation is being held hostage by a lying king. And there are government workers who find themselves now unable to pay bills because he is such a racist and he's trying to make a point to his racist face. It's a dark time in this country. But I need y'all to know, I'm I'm gonna keep on reading, and I'm reading because I trust the author. And the more I read, the more I see what's gonna happen in the end. In the end, all things work together for good to those that love God and are called according to God's purposes. That's what the author says. I'm gonna turn the page because in the end, even the youth shall faint and get weary. Young folks shall fall, but they that wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. I'm going to keep on turning because in the end, look what it says. It says, the Lord is my light, my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom do y'all know the author? Because if you know the author, weeping may endure for a night. But joy. My joy. Oh. <laughs> in the morning, if you know the author, you can testify, I've got a feeling, everything will be, be alright, right. the Holy Ghost told me, everything will be alright, be alright, be alright, be alright, y'all know why I know this, because I'm an old school preacher, and y'all know about now what the old school preacher would do. The old school preacher would say it's going to be all right. Because one Friday, mm. hey, one Friday, mm. they took my Savior out to a cross. And my Savior died for me and he died for you. They put him in the tomb. He stayed there all night Friday, all day Saturday. He gonna say early Sunday morning. <laughs> I, I say, uh... Oh 
Oh shoot, I'm oh yeah, here it goes. Sunday morning, God raised him from the dead. That was a strong drink, so I had more water to it. Plus, I left the refrigerator wide open, so this shit was good when they're not getting in. But, oh, it's some apple cider vinegar with the mother. Pineapple juice, not from concentrate. A little bit of ginger powder form. And then, um, yeah, the rest is water. You know how we do. He gives a word for the wounded. <laughs> and I know you've come here and some of you, you, you too hurt to hope. You too disappointed to dream. It's like, it's like pastor, as vicious as life has been to me. You want me to still have a vision? You don't know how painful this thing is. Tanisha said, I've been in a lot of pain, too hurt to dream. But once I got my word, I had a dream. I'm going to be a doctor. And now I'm in med. I'm, I'm, in, I'm, a, I'm a pre med student. And I came to talk to somebody. God brought you to church today in this service. You stopped dreaming a long time ago. You're scared to dream. You, 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 you're too wounded to dream. I want to pray for you. I want to pray for you. Matter of fact, let's do it. God, thank you that you are a heart fixer and a mind regulator. Thank you that when life wounds us, when life hurts us, and God, right now, I'm standing in the gap for everyone in this house who's known the frustrating pain of false alarms and losing streaks. God, speak to them with a fresh word for their wounds. Heal them from the inside out. And then, God, after you heal them from the inside out, help them with you to reimagine New possibilities blow their mind. Do exceeding abundantly above anything they can ask or imagine. 